before we dive into an in-depth tour of Control 20, let's talk a bit about the Materials Technology Centers, or MTCs for short. This will give you a better idea of how the products that come from the quarry to the asphalt plants are blended into just the right mix. I like to think of the MTCs as fancy kitchens that mix a variety of ingredients, rocks like me, sand, additives, and AC, into just the right recipe to produce asphalt that will withstand the demands placed upon it. They have to take into consideration the types of products and how they react with the AC or asphalt binder, which is actually oil, and it serves as the glue that holds everything together. For example, I'm a quarry rack, and I act like a sponge and I suck AC into my pores. It's really important for the AC to remain on the outside of the aggregate. Now, I think we're ready to take the tour of the asphalt plant, but I would like to invite a few friends along. I'd like for you to hear their story as well. So let's get them on a Skype call. Hey ZTI and PCI, how have you been? Thanks for getting on a call with me today. I'm super excited to hear all about your experiences so far and I can't wait to tell you about my first impression of Control 20. I'd like to start with taking you on a tour and then you can do the same for me. Every product, including myself, comes into this state-of-the-art asphalt plant via truck where it is dumped on the ground, moved into piles, and then the loader feeds it into the various bins. The control house, which houses the master computer, serves as the brains for the entire plant, and it holds the mix designs. The computer designates to each bin how much material to put into the mix. The bins dump the selected material onto the conveyor belt and then takes it up an incline belt which weighs the material before it gets to the drum. Once the material is in the drum spinning, there are flights in there that pick it up and send it towards the burner at the end of the drum. The aggregate is heated to a specific temperature to remove the moisture. As the material travels through the drum about two thirds of the way, recycled aggregate is added if it is a part of the mix design. Next, it is mixed with a superheated aggregate to achieve a total mix temp of 300 to 310 degrees and that's for 90 to 95% of the mixes. But of course, there are special mix designs that will need a higher or lower temp. Now the mix is ready for AC and it is poured into the mix as it's spinning. The material continues to travel through the drum, mixing with the AC as it moves to the discharge chute, eventually dropping onto the drake slat that will take the material up to the silos for storage. There are six silos at Control 20 and they actually have the ability to add two more if they need to in the future. These silos are huge and store 300 tons of material each. Now, communication is really important everywhere at Walbeck and the asphalt plants are no different. Each day, the asphalt plant receives a schedule that tells them what their crews are scheduled for and what commercial customers are requesting if they have called in ahead of time. This helps them stay ahead of material requests and makes sure they are ready to provide the appropriate mix when the trucks arrive. Throughout the day, crews continue to communicate with the plant so that they are aware of how much material they will need before the end of the day. Of course, there are changes in their schedule that sometimes require the plant to work a totally different plan. Knowing as much as they can about the needs of their customers allows this Wallback team to make a plan that ensures they meet their expectations. This construction business can get a bit crazy, but these Wallback team members work hard to go with the flow and make it happen. To ensure quality, there is a great deal of testing that is performed at the asphalt plant. The quality control technician takes a sample of the asphalt from a dump truck and then runs tests to check whose density, compacted density, how much liquid AC is in the mix, and the particle shape the blend is. That's basically it for right now. I'm still waiting to see what mix I'll be selected for, so stay tuned. I cannot wait to give you that news. How about you, ZTI? Tell us what you've been up to. Well, first of all, it's never a dull moment around here. All year round, the Zenith Tech workers are working on cool projects and they use some really big equipment to get the job done. I am proud to have been chosen for a high strict mix being placed on a big bridge job. So let me tell you more about bridge construction. Zenith Tech performs a variety of work. Sometimes they're building brand new bridges, sometimes they're replacing an existing bridge, and sometimes they're just redecking a bridge. For a rebuild, it all starts with demolishing the old bridge and they do that in stages. Here's an example of one approach. First, the demo starts with the superstructure, the beams, girders, and deck, and next continues with the substructure which continues and includes the foundation, columns, pier caps, and abutments. Next, they rebuild. The bridge needs a strong foundation which will be either piling or spread footing. The foundation supports the structure. How they approach this first step depends a lot on soil conditions. How strong is it? Will it support the structure? Will it require piling? If 
Piling is required, the piles are driven down until strong enough soil or bedrock is found and a strong foundation is established. Next, they pour the concrete footings and columns. Once the concrete is poured, they design and build the false work to support the concrete until it has reached the required strength. Temporary structures are often needed to hold up the permanent one throughout the bridge building process. Building the abutment is next, and this is where the girders will sit. When this is complete, it's time to set the girders, and that is something to see. The big cranes guide them in slowly, setting them perfectly into place. After that, they are ready to proceed with decking. Again, false work must be designed and built to support the deck after the concrete is poured and until it's reached its required strength. Finally, it's time to pour the parapets. Those are the barriers that are seen by trailers. Of course, their talented team in the field who builds the bridge is essential to project success. From crane operators and pile drivers to concrete finishers, operators, carpenters, and laborers, the entire team is committed to working smart and safe to consistently exceed the expectations of, a, of the customer and to help people reach their destinations. Hey PCI, how about you? I'm sure you have more to tell us about concrete. Sure. It's actually not that different from the asphalt mix designs you were talking about, Little Rock. The workers here at Premier Concrete use sand and stone, usually an inch and a half or three quarters in size, cement, and water reducers, depending upon the temperatures and testing, to manufacture ready mixed concrete. Cement is an important ingredient in their concrete mix, like the AC you mentioned, Little Rock. It reacts chemically with water and hardens over time. This curing takes time, as ZTI mentioned. The additives included in the mix are added to improve its strength, durability, or workability. Water reducers, for example, help to make the concrete more workable without needing to add more water to it. Too much water added to concrete will weaken the concrete. Their concrete mixes are made to meet PSI strength requirements. PSI refers to the compression strength of the concrete, the resistance to downward force measured in pounds per square inch. As a ready mixed supplier, Premier Concrete sells their concrete based on its rated PSI, and the higher it is, the more durable it is, and the higher the price. The key to manufacturing quality concrete is making sure to always use quality materials and have quality control procedures in place. Like you mentioned at Control 20 Little Rock, Premier Concrete also brings all of their sand from an outside source and continuously tests the material throughout the crushing process until they have achieved the desired results. They also maintain good relationships with their contractors, provide an excellent customer service, and communicate and resolve problems in a timely manner. So that pretty much covers it. I hope you both continue to have great success at both Control 20 and ZTI. We'll talk soon. Well, wasn't that fun? Things sure are different at each of our sites, but it's always fun to see how much we actually have in common. My studies at Control 20 continued to progress nicely. I absolutely loved it at the asphalt plant, and the Walbeck workers were so friendly. 